Hey guys, it is 4th of July today and it's Independence Day in the United States and it's traditionally the day that everybody does barbecue. So I decided today I'm going to do a souvlaki barbecue. Uh, a few weeks ago when I put on my Greek uh, souvlaki video on, uh, one of our viewers had mentioned that they fancied some uh, souvlaki. So I promised I was going to provide a very simple, easy recipe that you can make at home. So that's what I'm doing today. Cheryl, this is for you. So to do this, what I'm going to need is I'm going to use some pork loin. You can either use um, pork shoulder or pork loin, but I decided to use pork loin. So uh, I've already cut up about three of these, so I'm going to use this last one. I'm going to show you a very quick trick. These pork loins are usually very, very lean and very uh, easy to use, but they always have a little bit of this gristle here. So I'm going to show you a very easy trick to get rid of that gristle. You put your knife here and you go slowly just before you get to the end and you start sliding. You see how this gristle is coming off now? Nice and easy. Now once it gets to the end, all that gristle is gone and the meat is staying. And then what you do is you take this, take it off and you turn it around and you go the other side. And here it goes. Easy peasy, huh? So the gristle is gone, right? So what you want to do is, uh, some there may be a little bit of uh, gristle around here as well, you can get rid of them. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to make these uh, pieces about a, a, a cube inch, like, uh, one inch by one inch by one inch, but it, there's no rule about it, you can do whatever you want, as long as they're big enough that they don't melt on the barbecue, and also that they're not too small, uh, too, too big that they don't cook. So see this is about just about right. This is what you want. Sometimes what I do If I can't get a cube, if I've got a long piece like this, this is okay What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half in the middle and then when I'm skewing this I'll just skew it this way. So it will be a nice uh, little uh, uh, Different way of cubing it and putting it on a skew. So I'm just going to continue doing this finish one. I finished doing this. I'm going to show you how to marinate it So I finished cutting up the meat and now it's time to marinate. What do you need? Very simple. You need olive oil, lemon juice, fresh oregano. And if you don't have any fresh oregano, you can use uh, dried oregano and uh, some onion. That's it. So let's just get the onion done first. Uh, you just need a large onion. Uh, I want to grate this um, with large grate. Hopefully it won't make me cry too much. I really like to do things on camera rather than doing it prepared so that you know what is a real way of doing this. I first learned how to do cooking by watching Jamie Oliver. Very, very early shows, if you've seen them, he used to work from his house and he would just do it just like you're doing it by the minute. Just There was no cutting uh, videos and so that if you're watching at home and you want to do this, then you know it can be done. There is no production here. This is all real life, no cutting. Hopefully I won't cut my hand so it won't be very as wild because anything can happen. But what you do is normally have a end of your the, the butt end of your onion not cut completely so that you can use that to do this. Uh, I think we got enough. Gotta get rid of this extra here. And I'm gonna put this right in here. Alright. Rinse my hand. And then what we need is we need some olive oil. Olive oil, some, any virgin olive oil would do. Uh, I don't know how to measure things. I just do it by eyeball it. So this is about uh, four sh uh, pork shoulder, excuse me, pork loins. So I just put enough. I'll see at the end when I finish working on it. I'll know at the end whether it's enough or not. So let's get the lemon juice in as well. <clears throat> Very simple. Just squeeze these in. Don't worry about the seeds going in there because you're not going to put the seeds on the skews, are you? They're just going to give that flavor. There's no problem. We'll do it. This one, nice and juicy lemons. Sometimes you get them; they're very dry. Ooh. There you go. And then the last one. The fun part is going to come later when I put everything in there. I'm going to go in there with my hands. That's the most therapeutic thing that you ever do. And then what you do, I've got some uh, oregano, some fresh oregano from the garden. I'm just going to 
put these here and then we're going to give it a rough chop and that'll be it. As I said, if you don't have any, because you can't always get fresh oregano, if you can't get fresh oregano, uh, just use a dried one, those will be fine too. They're actually more uh, flavorful because they're all uh, dried and they're more concentrated flavor. There you go, it's easy, easy peasy, huh? All right, so souvlaki is one of the easiest things to make because the recipe is very simple and then you can put it all in together in a very, very quickly once the ramen is done. So you just wrap up this <coughs> oregano to bring in all the flavors. Once you put cut into it, all that aroma and flavor comes out and it's gonna give it a nice taste to the to the pork. Oh, I can just smell it. I wish you were here to smell this. It's awesome. Done. So, we're gonna go in. I think I need an olive oil, yes. Lemon juice, yes. Onion, yes. Oregano, yes. Fun time, let it begin. You just go in with your hand and just squeeze all this in. But this is so much fun, awesome. All right, look at this. This is already starting to cook. All that lemon juice starts cooking this pork that doesn't really need a lot of cooking because it's tenderloin and it's done. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this with a saran wrap and let it sit there and be happy for the next couple hours and then we are done. But one thing I wanted to make sure just to also remind you before we uh, move to on to Zatsiki is that we're ultimately going to be skewing these, right? And what I would suggest is use these wooden skews. So in order to make sure that they don't burn when you put them on the, uh, on the barbecue, it'll be a good idea to always put them in a little dish and <clears throat> You know what? Do you want to get this one here? And so what happens is all this wood soaks the water, so when you put it in the barbecue, it doesn't burn. And as I was just putting all this together, it just occurred to me, you know what I forgot? Ha! Huh. I knew I forgot something. This is what happens when you don't follow a recipe, you just do what you want to do. I forgot to put salt and pepper, so never ever forget salt and pepper. Because without seasoning, life has got no meaning. Right? There you go, there's your pepper, and then you put the... Oh, this gives me another opportunity to get my hand in there and have another therapeutic session. Therapy session, right? That's awesome. Very good. So that's done. We're going for one more mix here. And this baby is ready to go. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to make this tzatziki sauce. So the pork is happily getting marinated. The, the skews are getting soaked, and now time to make the tzatziki sauce. The tzatziki is really what's made this of lucky. So what we need, the real key ingredient, is a Greek yogurt. So let me get a couple of bowls here. Greek yogurt and cucumber. Uh, and a secret ingredient which I will tell you about later. Uh, so let me get my cucumber, my yogurt, and let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna make here. Yeah, this is what I'm gonna make the actual uh, tzatziki. So let's get the yogurt in here. Uh, I would say about half of this, which is this one, is total of uh, one kilo, about 48 ounces, so about four pounds. I'm gonna use about two two pounds of this, about half of that. Um, yeah, that should be good. That should be plenty of, uh, should give me plenty of uh, uh, tzatziki sauce. Then what we need to do next, is I'm gonna add the cucumber. Now the cucumber is very important. You want this tzatziki to be completely white. You don't want any kind of bits and pieces in it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna peel my uh, uh, cucumber, just the green part, and I'm gonna uh, grate it into almost watery products, so, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm not sure how much exactly I'm going to need. Uh, let's just see. Mm. Mm, nice. Let's do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do the whole thing because uh, it's gonna be 
going to need all of that. And then what I'm going to need after, what I'm going to add is salt and pe salt, no pepper. If you really must add pepper, be sure to add white pepper. As I said, you don't want any uh, uh, coloring uh, specks inside your tzatziki. You want it to be as close to a white color as possible. Even the cucumber is green, I'm sure you're thinking, but that's all going to get mixed up in here. So it's going to be in good shape. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add this in here. And then we're going to add our salt. Again, just eyeballing it. Uh, just a handful. Yeah, that should be good. And I can always taste it afterwards. You can do it to your taste. I don't like too salty stuff. So if it's not uh, too salty, then I can always add a little bit more. Now, here's the big secret ingredient that nobody will ever tell you. I'm going to tell you, it's going to make the big difference in your tzatziki, and that's sour cream. All you need to do is add about a couple of spoons of sour cream to your uh, tzatziki, and it's just going to make the difference. And yeah, that, sh that should do it. And then one final ingredient, very, very important. Uh, maybe not one final, one penultimate. You need some garlic, because you really want a bit of a taste of uh, um, I can find the garlic here. There you go. I can never find things in the kitchen. It keeps getting moved, so but I have managed to find it now. Just going to take this. You remember how I told you to do this garlic before? You just basically smash it. And thankfully, I'm not wearing my watch today, so so and then that. This is going to be quite garlic. Oh, flying garlic. And if you put a little bit of salt, that should do it. And then you just, I've got four cloves of garlic. This is going to be really, really garlicky. So I might not put the whole thing, but we'll see. Let me just see. And I might try to put a little bit in first and then taste it. Afterwards. I'm going to put in about half of that for now and I will taste it afterwards to see if it's good or not. Then one last item that I'm going to put is just going to give that freshness to it. It's some mint. So just rough chop some mint. mint. That should be enough. And that should give you some freshness to tzatziki. That is, makes, oh, I can just smell that freshness. Now, now this, one of the things that you want to do is you want to make your tzatziki well in advance because you give it some time to sit there and uh, get happy with the garlic, with salt, and uh, with the mint, so there you go, that's done. We're gonna add this here. All right, let's give it a mix. Now, if you find that your yogurt is a little bit too thick, you can always add a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice. Uh, I'm not gonna do that at this point because I think this cucumber is quite a watery uh, uh, vegetable and it's just going to eventually give out some water and it's going to loosen this up. At the end, by the time of serving, if I don't think it's loose enough, I can always add some lemon juice. So I think we're all set to do. When I'm ready to barbecue, I'll show you how to get it all on a skew and put it on a barbecue. Thank you. Hey guys, it's now time to skew this wonderful uh, pork has been marinated. It smells just fantastic, all this aroma uh, from marinade, from the olive oil, from the uh, lemon juice, all of it together with the oregano. So what you want to do is you want to take a skew which has been, if you remember, has been soaking in water, so because we don't want to do burn on the barbecue. And then the keys, doesn't really matter which pieces you take, but make sure that each one's the ones that you put on the same skew are almost the same size because you want them to cook at the same time, right? So if you put a, a big one and a small one, one will cook before the other, you don't want to do that. And the, how many you put in here dependent on how big your surface, your grill surface is. So we're just gonna uh, put 
these on and I'm picking these up as I come up. I'm looking for the bigger chunks because this one is a big one I started. So, and if it's long like this, you just go from one end. If it's a small and square, just go smack in the middle of it. So that should be just about good. So this one is another one. And boom, done. Make sure they're nice and flat. And then I'm just gonna put it here now. If you have a barbecue, obviously you wanna do barbecue, this is the best way to do this because the flavor, the charcoal flavor is what really gives it the taste. However, if you don't have a barbecue or you don't really wanna get with the mess of putting charcoal out and get it all that mess, there is an option. What you could do is what I suggest you do, you take any griddle or even a frying pan and then just put a few of these on a skew and put it on your frying pan and let it char a little bit on a very high heat, let it char and once it charred on both sides, you take them out and put it on a pan like this and stick it in the oven uh, for about seven to nine minutes uh, and then just keep checking it to make sure it's cooked. And once done, this is really just as, well, I wouldn't say just as good as a charcoal because it will still not have that char, but it'll be pretty close and it will be a lot easier, no messing with the charcoal and the, all of that stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue skewing these, have them all ready, and when I get to the grill, I'm gonna show you how to put them on the grill and go from there. Okay, I'm outside now, and, uh, and here's my uh, big green egg uh, grill, which has been going on for the last 25 minutes. This has been a fantastic buy, and if you're really interested to know more about this, you want to make some comment below, I'll be happy to do a review for it. But right now, just get back to the business at hand. The temperature is reading around 450, which is perfect. You want anywhere in 450 or above is where you want this temperature to be. I'm going to get this ready now, and uh, let's get going. <coughs> Bit of a quick uh, wipe to the grill to make sure there's no bits and pieces here is ready to go. And what you want to do is the key is to put this meat right. You see the the grills they go, go this way. You're going to go the opposite, so it's going to get a nice grill mark. So I'm going to put them right here. And it, usually there's a, a hot areas, there's a cold area. So I'm going to start from one edge, and in the middle is obviously the hottest area. I'm going to fill this up. And then uh, as they cook, I'll move them to the cooler areas. Well, close it out. Make sure this is a maximum opening. This is a maximum opening and we're off to the races. Don't touch it, leave it there for about at least five, seven minutes, then you can check on it and we can turn it over. So, as you can see, some of these are already cooked. I've just started moving around. Take a look at this fire, look at how beautiful it is. I opened up the valve completely, so now all the fire comes up and this is cooking nicely. And we're almost done. And then we're ready to eat. I can't wait to get my mouth around this. How? So what I thought I'll do is, when you're a chef and you're cooking, one of the most important things is you gotta taste your food, right? So you gotta taste your food. Taste your food, it's just... Mm. It's perfectly cooked, very moist on the inside, even though it's really nice and charred on the outside. I can taste the oregano, the lemon juice, the olive, olive oil, everything has just come together beautifully. <clears throat> hey, it's the moment of truth now, and as you can see, we got a big feast here, even though Sablaki was supposed to be the main event, we got other stuff going on, and a whole bunch of people hungry people waiting to come in, so I want to quickly do the taste uh, thing in here, and here what we're going to do. We're going to put a little bit of onion and parsley. This is just a little bit of red onion and parsley, it just gives it a nice flavor. I'm going to take one of my, uh, I'll just take this one that's going to fit in, look at this, I'm going to just take three pieces, I'm going to put it in here, and then here's my tzatziki that I made earlier today, look at this, nice and thick. I'm just going to put it in here and yeah, just like that. It is going to be heaven. A couple more onions for good measure. So here we go. Mm. Mm. This 
the meat is perfectly cooked, the pita bread nice and soft, and that's that ziki with that little bit of mint in it gives it such freshness, all comes together beautifully. And the onion gives it that extra tang that you need. It is absolutely out of this world. Wish you were here. Well, we finished eating. I hope you enjoyed this episode from Food Mood. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I'm working on editing the videos from Mexico that I visited a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but if you like what you saw, please make comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and tell your friends.